guys, welcome back to the Groom's Room Show, where the wedding isn't just about the bride, but it's about the groom too. We are up here on the Georgia side of Lookout Mountain, where I am on some property my family owns. It's very serene, lots of nature, very quiet, and we have a fully stocked pond. And on this special Survival Man episode of the Groom's Room, we aren't going to talk about weddings, we aren't going to talk about engagements, we're not going to talk about groom stuff. Thank you very much, sir. We're going to talk about being an alpha male in your family or soon to be family. We're going to show you in this episode how to lure, capture, kill, prepare, and eat your own food. Now we're going to start out easy. We're not going to start out with anything cute like a deer or rabbits or ducks. We're going to start out easy on the heart and uh, easy to prepare. Uh, We're going to go fishing. We're going to catch some bass and we're going to show you guys how to prepare them and cook them and enjoy them. So come along with us. Anchors away. <laughs> that didn't go away. Anchors away. First thing with catching a fish, you wanna pick a piece of bait that matches something that they might go after. So this is a uh, little rubber minnow. It's in a bluegill pattern, so it's something that they're used to seeing. Right. It's Lots also of- pretty dark out. We were playing around with this shiny chartreuse minnow. Uh, had some luck with it when it was sunny, but as soon as the sun went away, it wasn't quite as productive. So I am throwing this toward the shore from this boat along the shoreline. This is not necessarily an open water lure. There's a lot of reeds and shrubs and such along the edges. Uh, So we're trying to get this nestled nice and close to the edge because that's where they like to hang out and then they ambush prey. Things that usually are like bugs and frogs that would come out of the weeds, they just really quickly nail them. So we've had a couple of fish just flip off because we didn't even know they were there. Yep, they flipped us off. We will catch ourselves a fish and then uh, show everyone how to prepare it. If we catch a fish. If we catch a fish. If that doesn't happen, it's going to be a very boring episode. As if it's not boring already. Get under him. Okay. Get him. Uh, I was hoping for that whole, like, yeah. That uh, okay, cool. I caught you a delicious bass. Nice. Okay. Yeah, nice large mouth bass. Yeah. Enjoy. Enjoy the frigid temperatures. Yikes. So with survival, once you have uh, procured your food source, you need to put that fish or other uh, protein source on ice uh, or prepare it very quickly. Because once, uh, once you kill it, it starts to spoil. So we will take that fish back, show you how to fillet it, cook it, turn this into a cooking show now. Okay. So let's see how our buddy's doing. He is chilled. So in getting a fish, you want to start with very sharp knives, freshly sharpened. You're going to start right back here at the back of the skull, right behind those gills. And just... Okay, that takes care of his spine. So now you don't have to worry about uh, the shock that a fish goes through when you get it because uh, if you kill a fish, any other method that doesn't just sever the spine, uh, it goes into shock and a lot of that adrenaline will mess up the, the meat. So you start right here at the anal slit and don't worry, he might move some, but he's, he's gone. Um, so the, we wanna come right up just past the fins. Now, is it anything like gutting, say, a, a, a rabbit where you wanna be careful not to puncture the intestines or puncture the stomach? Yeah, I mean, you're kind of going through what we call the cloaca, which is the actual, like, butt of a fish. Um, So you don't want to, like, just start going around in there and ramming your knife around a whole lot. So once you find the underside of the mouth, you just use your knife to cut out the gut, the gut lining. Um, So yeah, you want to be doing this near water so that you can just clean it out. Now, the thing to make note of is the fish is still really limp, so that's a really good sign for a clean fish uh, who's who's died well. It's not gonna have rigor mortis setting in. Messes up the meat. So what we're gonna do is using a different knife since we don't necessarily wanna contaminate ourselves on the other side of the cutting board. In a survival situation, getting a disease would be a very bad situation indeed. Cilantro, a 
couple of lemon wedges straight in. So we're gonna take and put a couple of slits on the outside to give us uh, some area for the water from the inside of the escape. So we've built our fire, we've stuffed our fish, we've borrowed our grill grate uh, from the barbecue grill, because we're just gonna put that right over the fire right there. Be nice and hot. Um, Take a little bit of olive oil, dress our fish down, just give it a little bit of flavor through the middle, and uh, put a little olive oil on top. Fish cooks pretty quick, so we're gonna go with what we got and check it. So we hope this video has given you the confidence to be able to survive in the wild, maybe in a survival situation, catch, prepare, and be able to provide food for your table. So it looked delicious. It smelled delicious. A taste uh, left something to be desired. I'm not sure if bass is really uh, the, the top uh, echelon of, of fish. It's very gamey and fishy smelling and tasting. Thankfully, we are not in a survival situation, so it's okay if we cheat a little bit, which is why we are here at Main Street Meats in downtown Chattanooga. Get a real sandwich. A large Reuben sandwich. It's gonna taste a lot better than that bass, no I fish. think. No. Thanks for watching today. We hope you learned a lot, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Don't forget. Mark. <laughs> do that again. Do that again. <laughs> hey, oh girl, what's up?